So I will focus my talk today on the control of HIV-1 gene transcription by CTIP2 and I will further uh, focus my talk on HIV-1 post-integration latency and uh, specifically in uh, microglial cells which are the resident macrophages of the central nervous system. So why are we studying post-integration latency of the HIV-1 in the brain? So, uh, the first response is, the brain is infected very early post the primary infection. Uh, we can find a virus in the brain after two weeks post-infection, so it's really early. And uh, that means that uh, the reservoir can be uh, uh, made in the CNS very early. Um, why studying microglial cells? because uh, these resident macrophages, you can see them here, are the main target for the virus in the CNS. And they, they have been described in the macaque model as a potent reservoir for the virus. And the third point is that uh, uh, due to the brain barrier, the CNS constitute a sanctuary for this reservoir regarding the, the heart therapy. Okay, so uh, we try to understand how HIV-1 gene transcription is regulated in these microglial cells. So, as in uh, other cells, you know that uh, HIV-1 post-integration latency is regulated at the transcriptional level of the viral life cycle, and that uh, this uh, level, this step, is not impacted by the current therapeutic tools. So uh, we really need to identify uh, the key factor that control this step of the viral life cycle in any reservoirs and also in these microglial cells. So the idea and the goal is to develop new therapeutic tools, new therapeutic tools that uh, uh, would be able to target these new key factors and uh, uh, by uh, this way to purge, at least to reduce the reservoir and then to allow the patients to uh, be cured. Okay, so uh, just to remind you how uh, 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 HIV-1 gene are transcribed, HIV-1 gene transcription occur in two uh, steps, an early phase that belongs mainly to the cellular transcription factors that recruit cofactors. Here we have modification of the chromatin structure and a formation of small initiated transcripts. And the second phase, then the late phase, belongs mainly to the transactivate of TAT protein, which is the viral protein. And this protein recruit the PTFB complex made by cyclin T1, TDK9 from an inactive complex represented here to the TAR region. This recruitment promotes the phosphorylation of the RNA pol 2 and the elongation of the transcripts and then the viral production. Okay, so these steps, as I mentioned, these steps is also controlled by the chromatin structure. And we know that uh, the nucleosomes are well pos uh, positioned at the uh, provirus. So there is one key nucleosome here just uh, located after the initiation site. This nucleosome is called NUC1 and the stability of this nucleosome is very important for the efficiency of transcription. We know that uh, heterochromatin structure disfavor HIV-1 gene productions and the stability of this nucleosome disfavors the transcription and the displacement, at least the destabilization of this nucleosome allow for a uh, high rate of transcription. So we are, sorry, we are interested in transcription factors and the recruited enzymatic complex that could induce the establishment of heterochromatic formation in uh, the microglial cells. So logically, we focused here on uh, HDAC and HMT activity. And what about the choice of uh, this transcription factor? So 
CTIP2 for CUPTF interacting protein 2 was a good candidate. Uh, it is expressed in uh, T cells, in brain, we found it in cardiomyocytes, and uh, uh, we had pre uh, previously uh, published that CTIP2 can inhibit the early phase of the HIV-1 gene transcription and the late phase. So definitely it was a good candidate. So what we did first, we tried to identify uh, complex associated with CTIP2 and we focus on chromatin modifying enzyme containing complex. We have first demonstrated that CTIP2 cannot bind directly to the HIV-1 promoter but is recruited to this promoter via its association with SP1. So uh, we, we knew uh, previously how CTIP2 is associated with this um, uh, with uh, the provirus, the latently integrated provirus. So the first things we, do, we did was to immunoprecipitate CTIP2 and look for an HDAC activity. And we found a high HDAC activity associated with CTIP2. And this HDAC activity was sensitive to tricostatin A, uh, suggesting that uh, the enzymes associated with CTIP2 here are from the class one or from the class two. So we try to identify these HDAC enzymes by immunoprecipitation. We can see the re you can see the results here. And uh, we uh, identified then HDAC1 and HDAC2 associated with CTIP2, but not HDAC3, HDAC3 at the control. So at this point, we knew that the HDAC activity associated with CTIP2 is uh, provided by HDAC1 and HDAC2. We further mapped the uh, interface between CTIP2 and the uh, uh, HDAC enzymes uh, to see if it was compatible with the binding of the other factors. And uh, we saw that uh, the HDAC here, we did then, to do that, we did immunoprecipitation with truncated form of CTIP2. And we saw that the HDAC activity uh, was recruited via, via the N-terminal domain of CTIP2, which is fully compatible with the binding, with the binding of SP1 here at the central domain and we see HP1 protein at the uh, C-terminal domain. Okay, to go further in this characterization, we look for the localization of uh, uh, the HDAC and CTIP2 in uh, the microglial cell nuclei. And then to do that, we overexpress the HDAC and CTIP2. And you can see here a very particular, a very specific uh, structure induced by CTIP2 expression in these cells. And we uh, observed a uh, strong colocalization of HDAC1 and HDAC2 here uh, when uh, these uh, two proteins was, were co-expressed in the, in the nuclei. There is even also uh, a strong relocation of this enzyme in the specific structure. So clearly at this point we knew that uh, uh, this factor is able to recruit the HDAC. So and uh, it's, uh, it is able to interact with uh, this enzymatic activity. So is this uh, interaction uh, functional? So to respond to this question, we first perform uh, LUC assay with promoter uh, LUC constructs. So we, uh, we use the HIV-1 promoter clone just uh, before the luciferous gene and uh, to, to use these constructs, we can evaluate the uh, activity of the promoter. And then we transfected these constructs in the presence of CTIP2 over expression and the concomitant expression of HDAC1 or HDAC2. So you can see here that CTIP2 over expression reduced the activity of the promoter and the concomitant over expression of HDAC1 cooperates uh, to the uh, silencing of the promoter. Same results here 
by overexpression in HDAC2. What happened at the replication level? So after uh, HIV-1 infection, same experiments performed after uh, infection of the cells. And you see here that CTIP2 repress the HIV-1 production. And again, the concomitant overexpression of the HDAC cooperate to this uh, repression. So uh, this has been these experiments have been made with overexpressed over proteins, so we look at the endogenous. And uh, to do that, we perform uh, knockdown experiments in the context of HIV-1 infected cells. And again, we saw that CTIP2 here, the knockdown of CTIP2 strongly favors the uh, viral production and the concomitant knockdown of HDAC1 and HDAC2 further cooperated to this strong induction. So uh, here we knew that CTIP2 interacted with HDAC1, HDAC2 uh, and uh, this, interaction, this interaction is physical and functional. But we had no proof that CTIP2 recruit these enzymes to the HIV-1 promoter. So to respond to this question, we perform uh, chromatin IP experiments, first in infected microglial cells, so that express very low level of HIV-1. They are very restrictive to HIV-1 production. And you can see that the HDAC are uh, uh, present at the HIV-1 promoter and uh, as CTIP2 and as a control, the SP1 protein. How can we prove how could we prove that CTIP2 favor the recruitment of these HDAC enzymes? So to respond to this question, we overexpress CTIP2 and we look for the recruitment of the enzymes. And we found that upon CTIP2 overexpression, we found a higher level of HDAC1 and HDAC2 associated to the HIV1 promoter. And in the same time, we saw a lower, a lower level of uh, acetylated histone H3 at the NUC1 nucleosome here. So that means that uh, CTIP2 is able to recruit the HDAC, the enzymes, but it recruits also the activity to the HIV-1 promoter. Uh, most of the results were confirmed by uh, looking at the CTIP2 knockdown, in CTIP2 knockdown cells. So we confirmed that uh, at least HDAC2 was reduced to the promoter. Surprisingly, we see an increase of HDAC1, and we explained that by the ability of HDAC1 to be recruited directly via, the S via SP1. Okay. CTIP2 interacts with these HDAC enzymes, recruits them to the HIV1 promoter, and this results to, uh, sorry, this results to the deacetylation here of the of the NUC1 nucleosome. This is not sufficient to induce heterochromatic formation. Now, uh, to create a heterochromatic formation and to in induce a strong sil silencing of HIV-1 gene transcription, uh, the lysine 9 here of the histone h should be methylated to allow the recruitment of the heterochromatic protein. So we look for HMT protein and uh, we found that the SUVA39H1 histone methyl transferase was associated with CTIP2. So we first look at that by CoIP experiments, and we found that SUVA39H2 was associated with the central domain of CTIP2. Again, when we look at the localization of this protein in the cellular nuclei, we found this uh, CTIP2 induced structure, and we found uh, SUVA39H1 associated with this structure. Then the same strategy as uh, uh, this that I have, I have described for the HDAC. So we know that HDAC1, HDAC2 are associated with CTIP2 and SUVA is also associated here. We we'll look for the function of this association by the same way, we infected microglial cells in the context of CTIP2 and SUVA overexpression. We saw cooperation for the silencing. 
of uh, uh, the virus production and in the context of CTIP2 knockdown and Suvatrin9 knockdown, we saw here uh, that uh, it favors uh, strongly HIV1 production. So again, this interaction is functional. Is again Suvatrin9H1 recruited to the promoter by CTIP2? Same strategy. We look at that by chromatin IP experiments, first in infected microglial cells. So in fact, in infected microglial cells, we, we found huge amounts of Suvatrin9H1 associated, and we found the heterochromatin protein 1 alpha, beta, and gamma. So now what happened when we overexpress CTIP2? Could, can CTIP2 recruit Suva to uh, the promoter? And uh, uh, you can see here that upon CTIP2 overexpression, we saw higher amount of SUVA associated to the promoter. We saw also a higher trimethylation here of the lysine 9 of the histone H3. And we saw an increased recruitment of the HP1 proteins. In the context of a CTIP2 knockdown, we saw less SUVA associated. We saw less trimethylation. We saw less HP1 beta, less HP1 gamma but no, differences, uh, no difference for HP1 alpha. So CTIP2 is able to associate with HDAC SUVAR and is able to create heterochromatin at the HIV1 promoter. So finally, I will just focus on this point. We just look at the uh, wall complex and the... Uh, the um, displacement of the wall complex in the U1 uh, model, which is a, a monocytic a latently infected model upon PMA treatment. And I just focused here and we did time chip uh, targets in CTIP2 upon PMA treatment. And we saw here that upon PMA treatment, CTIP2 is displaced from the promoter. And in the same time, we saw the recruitment of the uh, histone acetyltransferase uh, CBPP300 as a control SP1 is SP1 binding is not modified. Okay, just to summary this first part of uh, of the talk, upon active transcription we have here uh, transcription factors that recruit co-activators, and upon HIV one gene silencing in microglial cells we saw that CTIP2 is recruited to the SP1 binding sites. It recruits HDAC1, HDAC2 to deacetylate here the NUC1 nucleosomes. It also recruits SUVA39H1 to allow the trimethylation here of the lysine 9 of the histone H3, and H3, and this allows for the recruitment of the HP1 uh, protein. Okay, that's published. Uh, that uh, we knew by this uh, experiment that CTIP2 may be able to create heterochromatic environment and then to induce the establishment of HIV-1 latency. But the key question is also, how can these cells resist to reactivation? Creating heterochromatic formation at the HIV-1 promoter is essential, but not sufficient to explain how this cell can resist to the environmental reactivation. So we wanted to investigate this point. So I will finish by uh, uh, thanking my direct collaborators. So the first part of the story has been uh, essentially uh, made by Céline Marbon. She's still a postdoc. Uh, and Thomas Cherrier did the second part. It's this guy here. I need to thank my direct collaborator here, Christian uh, Schwartz, who work also in, uh, in my group. And here, a lot of uh, uh, people that contribute to this story. And in, I need to thank uh, uh, particularly uh, Karin von Lin. Um, she's my uh, direct collaborator. We have close collaboration on, on this project. Thank you very much.